Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going over Unit 5, Topic 4, as we learn about retrieving memory. To start, let's do a quick recap of the information processing model from our first topic review video of the unit. If you need a more in-depth review of it, go back and watch the first video of the unit. Remember, we start with our sensory memory, which moves into our working or short-term memory, and eventually ends up being encoded and entered into our long-term memory. Now, what we're going to be talking about in this video is the retrieval process, how we access stored memories. Retrieval can be broken down into two main categories, recognition and recall. Recognition is when you can identify something that you previously learned. For example, when you're taking a multiple choice test, you're using recognition to retrieve past information you learned. Recall, on the other hand, is when you can give information about something that you have previously learned on your own. For example, if you're taking an FRQ and you have to define a word, you can recall the definition on your own. Notice that when we're talking about recalling information, you're remembering everything about the concept on your own. But with recognition, you don't have to remember everything every aspect of the concept. You merely have to identify the concept. Since a multiple choice test gives you answers to pick from, you just have to pick the correct answer. But in FRQ, you have to create the answer on your own. Recall is more challenging to do, and over time becomes more difficult to do as well. Now, whenever we recall information, we go through a process known as relearning. The more you study information and constantly recall the information, the more you will be able to improve your retrieval process. This is one of the reasons why people say practice makes perfect. Now, when you encode information, it often often gets paired with other bits of information. For example, if you're learning the names of your classmates, you probably will also connect their names with the hair color they have, or where they sit in class, or how they talk, or different aspects about them. The different bits of information that are connected with the memory serve as retrieval cues. These help you access the information at a later date. These cues are sometimes called associations. They are formed when we encode a memory. This is why different things like smell, taste, touch can have us remember specific memories. Oftentimes, we activate these memory associations without us consciously trying to do so. This is known as priming. For example, if I start talking about hospitals for the next five minutes and then showed you a bunch of different words, you will probably be more likely to recognize words like doctor, nurse, or surgery. One way you can utilize priming is by trying to think back to when you experienced an event or learned information. By using context to help you recall your memory, you're able to retrieve specific memories. This is known as context-dependent memory. On the other hand, if you encounter something outside the typical setting, it can actually be more difficult to remember the information. This is known as the encoding specificity principle, which is when certain ideas or memories are linked to the context in which they are created. For example, a couple of years ago, I was at a theme park with my family and we just got off the roller coaster. And all of a sudden I heard people shouting, Mr. Sin, Mr. Sin. And I immediately turned around and recognized some of my former students. But I was caught off guard seeing them in this specific setting since I was nowhere near the city I teach in. And I was also not used to seeing students at a theme park in July. So I was struggling to remember their names since the context of the meeting was not our usual setting. Also, just in case my former students are watching right now, don't worry, I did remember your guys' names. It just took me a little bit longer than normal to remember. We can also see that your mood impacts your ability to recall memory. Oftentimes, memories are associated with good or bad feelings. Mood congruent memory is consistency between one's mood state and the emotional context of the memories recalled. For example, when you're very happy, it's very easy to think back and remember all the positive and happy memories you have. At the same time, unfortunately, when you're having a bad day, you're also more likely to start accessing memories that have a negative experience. Mood congruent memories are also an example of state-dependent memories, which are memories that are created in one state, such as being sick or healthy, and these memories are easier to remember the next time we're in that state. Sometimes when we are trying to think back to past events, we notice that our memories are not complete, and that there may be bits of information that are missing. This can happen because because of serial position effect, which is how our memory is affected by the order or position of the information. For example, if you're trying to remember different words on a list, at the end of your studying, you'll probably be able to remember the words at the end of the list. This is due to the recency effect, which is you can recall the last few words since they were the ones most recent. But later in the day, you'll probably be able to recall the first few words on the list because you repeated them the most. This is known as the primacy effect. The words in the middle, unfortunately, are the ones that you'll most likely forget and need to go back and study more. As we can see, our memory is complex and it can be impacted by a variety of different factors. But now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're finding value in this content and check out the Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that'll help you with all the units of AP Psychology and it'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you online.